here we have our well trailer that's in rough shape. We have our electric furnace and coil. Take a look at her. Get it off one hand. She's a beauty. Have to bring our special trailer tools in here. Take a look at it. Oh yeah. She's gonna be nice. We have our evaporator coil here. Orifice size 77, three and a half tons. Serial number C3099. I guess it's a 1999 probably. Not quite sure. Maybe we'll see some more hints before we're done. Pretty dirty. So definitely needs to be taken out and cleaned because it is stank. Well, we're going to open up this furnace door too and see what's inside of here. Hopefully a furnace. Here are the innards of a typical electric furnace. You have a blower. You have the heater compartment down here. We can open that up in just a second. See our capacitor is way at the back over there. It looks like it's got some murdered bugs on it. So maybe we'll take a look at that too, see if it's good to go or not. And then we can get on to it. We'll open this up too, take a look at it. It says the power's on, so we'll check that as well. Like we have an E2EB012, which is 12 kW furnace. This breakers were awful hard to get turned off. In fact, I didn't I had to push them so hard. We have our fan relay up top, sequencer at the bottom, that transformer in the middle right there. Pretty simple inner workings, just a lot of wire coiled up. They get a little bit more complex, just a little bit more, just mainly a bunch of wires everywhere. So if I can check that capacitor, I will. Let's see what we had to do to do that. You got to take those screws out right along the corner there, and no screws on this side. So maybe we'll slide around and take a look at that capacitor, because they're almost always bad. We have 248 volts here. I actually saw a question in one of the Facebook groups not too long ago about voltage being real high, and I think he had like 247, 248 volts. This isn't so bad. It's pretty standard around here. If we got up into the upper 250s or 260, I'd start to worry. But this is sort of standard for my area anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Get our reading from the other side here. Well, if I can get them to stay on there. Same story, 248.1. So we have power going through. I'm going to shut it off at the breaker because these damn breakers right here were so tough. I'm worried about flipping them off and having them break or something like that. Ironically, breakers that break. So let me go find them in the panel and shut it off. We can hear the beeping in the distance. That's our voltage. See furnace down here at the bottom, 70 amps. Uh, the beeping stops. We'll go check both of them, make sure we're squared away. Zero volts there. Zero volts there. Go ahead and hook it up to a ground. Nothing. Nothing on that one. Okay. And this one. Zero. This one, nothing. Okay, so we're squared away. We slide that blower out and take a look at it. Oh, holy crap, look at that. Look at that right there, guys. I'm not checking this blower for shit. We're going to close the door and test the system with these little bitches in there, I guess. Good grief, look at that. Looks like they've killed a lot of them, but there's a lot of them left. Wow. Well, we're not going to check that capacitor today. I'm going to advise it gets replaced because most of them are bad. But, I mean, good grief.
Nothing. She's got problems. We'll take her out and take a look at her. Even though we have a bug situation. I think there is some deterioration of the wheel. <laughs> Let's try that again. That's better. Yeah, I didn't hear any sounds that time. All, All right. that crap came out of the blower. Kind of some large pieces of metal right there. I don't know where all that stuff came from. I don't see it. Let's see if we can find some piece of the blower that's missing a big ass. I see a lot of tears in here. Some of it might be coming from the inside of that plate right there. Can't really tell though. A 7.5 microfarad capacitor. Uh, usually these things are weak, but this one is seven, so it's pretty close. A couple wire nuts here that are missing. That's not very safe. No, no, no. I had to get that and fix it and put it back in there see if this damn thing will start. Alright guys, I'm trying to get these wires put back together. What a, what a heap. I don't know if this will work or not. This is an awesome neighborhood. <laughs> Wonder what the HOA fees are. I'm just joking. Though. This is a pretty shitty place. I can't lie. All right, I guess my light went dead. These two leads are fine. I put them back together. And the ground wasn't that good though. That could have been better. Don't really need a ground. But there we are. Okay, hopefully the fan relay is fine. I ran it for a second and it kind of wobbled around a bit. We'll just say it like that. Maybe that, that might have been because there was some debris in there, so we're gonna start it up again. Oh, that was straggler. Freedom, freedom, why? Oh, precarious. How precarious life can be. All right, let's put this thing back together. I have my meter on there. I put the blower back in. I put some uh, 5 16 screws in there to kind of hold it in place. This is all the debris that came out of the wheel, so that'll definitely throw it out of balance. So I'm going to turn this thing back on to see if this thing's alive or dead. Guys, I'm going to check power. Nothing's happening on the blower. Got 240 volts there. 240 volts here. I don't know if we're getting a signal or not. Let's see if we got any power. I'm going to check a relay here. Let's get down here and take a closer look. We're looking inside here. This is a blower relay. We got power, but I don't know if we have power actually going to the control voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit. It's hard to get in some of these things. We got our green and our common. So I'm going to try to get in there. Not showing anything right there. So no control voltage coming from the thermostat, which might be the problem. I might have to hot wire this thing to get it to come on. Let me see if I have any low voltage at all. I have to get a little bit closer to the floor. That's the problem with these damn things. I'm six foot three and these things are all mounted to the floor. All the controls. Got his new piece of plywood sitting here, which was evidently probably where the floor rotted out where it flooded. Per the norm. <laughs> Look, we have the thermostat, high voltage. We got a high voltage on the transformer, we got a low voltage. We got red. 
Common is yellow, it looks like. Let me make sure that's right. I might be black down there. Three wires and three wires on top. Let me get a closer look in here, guys. Move some of the rust out of the way. You can see our commons. We can catch them up on top, but a damn lion sits in the way. We got a red right here. Let's see if I can't find a common to trace it back to. There's no common on this one. Transform might be fried. Let's see here. We got commons on all the relays, so I should be able to use it's black on the sequencer see where it jumps off of it looks like we have one come loose looks like we have a loose down loose wire down there off the sequencer might be our problem I'll show you guys if you look down there you see a black and white stripe wire that's supposed to be a common going to the sequencer so let me shut things off and turn it back on to see if that don't solve our problem down there at the bottom you can see a little insulator there it looks like our heat kit's been changed at 1.2 probably burned up we'll see why that is maybe airflow related lord be with me well looky there she's alive Vibrating a whole lot less now they got some of that shit out of there. Let's see if the condenser comes on too. See if we can see it out the window. Nah. Alright. So the blower's on. Watch half the battle. That is. You can hear it in there. Listen, now listen for it. Tick right there. We should, our cooling should be coming on. Let's figure out why that is. They give me a certain amount of money for these things. So let's see if we can't max it out while we look for these problems. I'm gonna seal this thing back up. Let's see if we have any voltage outside. All right, we got our nice subterranean unit with our redundant ground. Put in by the run cap bandit. <laughs> Strap right there, man. Here it is. Strap right there. Come on. You can do it. See if we got power on this old piece of shit, and we'll see if the contactor's pulled in. I don't hear it. I think there might be some. There might be some smart asses here because there's another loose wire right there. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> that is amazing. So there's a loose wire which might be the cause of why this thing is not running. The machine has voltage, and we have this connection here because down to there. Hmm. So I'm gonna shut the power off inside before we blow the transformer and see if I can't find that wire and reconnect it. Get these tied in here. I got an eight wire. It's like the weed whacker got it or something. It'd be a real shame if I start this thing up and the compressor's dead or something. After all this fun. It would be a darn tootin' shame, guys. But an expected failure at this point. I expect it to be grounded. I'll be pissed off if she runs perfectly. Nothing to fix and build my customer for. See how much time we have before the before the rain comes. Ain't much time left. I know that. Go 
little something on there just to hold it in place. Make it long enough to stick up in there. Mosquitoes are coming out. October mosquitoes, fantastic. Sitting next to an anthill, this is just like a bug laden job right here. We got mosquitoes, there goes one right there. You met this maker. Don't worry, there's 400 million where that came from. So I'll get my red two down, 400 million to go. Cut the rest of these off. Strip them out. Put them up through there. But it doesn't matter which way you wire these because it's just going to either side of the contractor, so it don't matter. Just an air conditioner, not a heat pump. All right. That's nice. Yeah, let me just skip over this box right here. Real swift, Zach. Real swift way to demonstrate the wrong thing to do. all the mosquitoes cloud my vision worried about Zika virus they want to catch the Zika virus three down should have put my fan out here four down Test this capacitor, make sure it's working. I'm gonna double check. I know we turned the breaker off again. My zero volts. Ground nothing. Ground nothing there. All right. So we can get a little bit better vantage point here. I take this hardy insulator off. The problem with this is, you see that pops right off. This will just rub right through. So, you know, we got a compressor. We got a herm going to the compressor. We got a fan going to the fan. Number 17. Then we had two wires coming here to the common. So let's take those off. The fan. If I can get them off. Good grief. We'll check this thing out. 40 slash 5. Well, the fan side first. We got 4.8, that's good. And we got 38.6, which is fine too. So let's see if we can't use this damn thing over here. It'd be a real pity if this was actually usable. Damn, there's a lot of mosquitoes out here. Yeah, it's 
it looks a little small. Let's see what we got. Yep, she's a little small. So let me go get a different one. All right, we got ourselves a strap right there. Put these wires back on. Get our herm for the compressor. It's a little loose. I can't tighten them back up. Every time you take one of these things off, it gets a little loose. They get loose, they're gonna get hot and they're gonna start burning off, causing problems. So, you best keep them tight if you can. Just replace them if you can. Is our fan going up there? We have a replacement fan motor from Wagner. Wagner. Wagner fan motor. Best fan motor in the world. Keep family cold. Cold in summer, hot in winter. No questions asked, Wagner. He's best. That is my impression. John Malkovich. Actually, my, that's my impression of the cosmonaut from the movie Armageddon. I think it's spot on. Now check it out. I think it's spot on. Now listen to this. Oh, pressure gets to 150, okay. 200, okay. 250 means disaster for Russian space station. Now if that shit ain't perfect, I don't know what is. All right, guys. So we should be good to go now. The machine probably doesn't have any refrigerant in it. Maybe I should have put a stub gauge on. I'm living dangerously. I have to dig out the connections down here. And then we're going to hook up, see if I can't find them. Yeah, see? That's what you get. Let me the gauge ports out. point directly downward. So I have the suction port, which I guess I'll put on and see how it looks. But the, but the liquid gauge points directly into the earth. The two wire coming from outside are red and white. They are connected to, we have our yellow going up to the thermostat, I guess. And our red is going to the black, which is our common. So that looks fine. Let me take these off and make sure we have continuity between them to make sure there's no other breaks in this wire. We have our wires going outside. We have 19.6 ohms, which is a touch high for a contactor, but still it's okay. Let's see if we have power going out to these lines on the Y1 and Com. Well, we got seven entire volts, which is not good. That's not gonna turn anything on. So let me look into it a little bit deeper. It's the red coming right off the transformer to this ground, or common, sorry. But you look down deeper inside there, you can see right there, there's some burned off wires there that have to be repaired as well on sequencer. Probably have to replace that sequencer. Oh well, this thing's kind of like a never ending uh, trap. We now have 25 volts going out to the condenser because the thermostat, the little toggle switch is really kind of a son of a bitch. So I pushed it all the way over and we finally got it to turn on, which I thought it already was, unfortunately. But now it is. Oh, happy day. So I'm going to reconnect the wire to the outdoor unit, seal everything back up, pick up all the shit I just tripped over and knocked out of my little box. Hey, shit happens. And we'll get outside and test her out. I might even bring out the I-manifold because this is definitely an I-manifold worthy system. The UEI DTH35 taking our relative humidity and temperature in here. You see our humidity is pretty high because it's a nice, cool, muggy autumn day here in North Carolina. The outdoor unit is running. I don't see any frost on there. I don't see much of nothing on there right now, but we'll see what happens here. It should start condensing pretty heavily if it's got a good charge. I took my return temperature and these capillary tubes aren't even that cold, which is not good and our supply temperature, I don't know if you can see that there, I can see it, it's a 76.2. So it's about the same as the return. So I'm expecting an epic fail when I go outside. 
I don't think I'm going to use the I manifold on this one. It's just a hunt. We have 1.2 amps on the outdoor unit. I mean, it's just the uh, fan running. I'm going to check and see if we have continuity. And the compressor windings, it hasn't even been running, so if there's no continuity. It means it's finished. So we shall see. Perhaps we have a burned off wire. Negative 10.8. No refrigerant in this machine. Thanks for the fun, machine. Thanks for the fun, fucker. <laughs>